Hello there, good morning everybody. So I'm a little bit, a um, little bit late this morning. I'm um, rather rushed. Um, hello. So who have we got? We've got Linda and um, Debbie and Joella and Grace and me Julie and Cherry and Angela and Sue and Mandy. Wet in Devon. Oh, it's lovely here. It's actually coming over. It's lovely. Um, hello, Lisa and Trisha from Liverpool. Hello, Jean. Um, hello, uh, Manahill from Brisbane and Judy's in the New Forest and Sharon's in Australia. Um, sorry if I miss anybody. There's loads of you here this morning. Um, hi, Lynn. Hi, Julie. Hi, Janet. And um, Jackie and Jones and Julie Jones. Jackie and Joan and Julie Jones. Lots of J's all, lots of J's all came together all at once. Uh, hi Tracy, Beverly, Jackie, Sue, Deborah, and Sue and Pam and Janet. And oh, we are busy today, aren't we? 180 Facebook, 63 YouTube. Normally get more on YouTube. That'll pick up. Um, I haven't changed the colour. I'll do that in a minute. I haven't changed the colour of my thread. I've, I've literally just come racing down here today. Raining Gloucestershire. Oh. Hello Brian in Ohio. Um, I'm going to make this in a bit. Um, purely selfishly. Dog walking bag again. Um, so there's a zip pocket in the top. Show you up there. Um, which is just about big enough for my phone. And then I've got a pocket on the front that I can put um, maybe poo bags or dog treats or something like that in. And the strap can be as long as you like. So that could be a crossbody as well. Um, so when I'm out walking, if I've got a frock on that hasn't got pockets, then I've still got somewhere to, to carry my treats. Shall I tell you what, I've, uh, what, I, <laughs> what I do before I had a bag? Uh, handbag hardware, not yet Sylvia. It takes ages to come in from the Far East. So I'm not sure what Kim's got on order, but Alaska. Um, yeah, when, uh, that if, if I haven't got pockets and before I did have another little bag, didn't I? And I haven't got my bag with me. I keep treats, cheese normally in a poo bag. And it must look really odd because whenever um, we uh, approach somebody, I'll take a piece of cheese and just have it in my hand and, and Bob knows that she's got to behave. So I look like the best dog trainer because we walk past people and she just sits and waits for the cheese and if they've got another dog she'll get a bit excited but then she comes and sits and waits for the cheese it's brilliant but it must look really odd when we're approaching somebody and I'm rummaging around in a poo bag so rummaging around in a nice little crossbody bag I think would work an awful lot better um we're all good thank you Gina um, Karen's house and dog sitting in Wales for my son and boyfriend oh that's a that's a, what a nice holiday with the dogs as well. Is it today? It's the second. Is it? It is. Oh gosh, I put the date wrong, haven't I? Never mind. That will that will stay as the first. Can't change it. Sorry about that. Um, hello, busy in Nova Scotia. Um, oh, hello, so in Brisbane. Morning and Attila in South Africa. We're we're very multilingual today, aren't we? I do have some new. Um, fabrics to show you first and we've got some got some planes for you but they're really beautiful Rose and Hubble planes um, we don't have Lisa on Facebook by the way this morning before you ask because um, she's babysitting her granddaughter today uh, hello Carmen right so let me show you these they are quite excited about these because they're just really beautiful colors so let me show you these. So all literally just popped onto the website today. And I'm going to try and show you these quite close together. Just in case they look a little bit similar. So this one is khaki. And again, these are the Rosen Hubble. So 100% cotton and really, really lovely quality. Um, so that one's khaki and this one's mink. We've gone for quite, um, I think, quite vintage, really classy colours with these. We haven't had colours like this on the website before. And, and sometimes, it, it, even we pick out fabrics or you ask questions saying, you know, can you, can you match a plane to go with this pattern? We haven't got anything. Um, so we thought we'd get some more unusual colours in. Um, couldn't find on Facebook to ask about the machine. Is that Lisa? Maybe she'll be there later. Um, hello, Christine in the US of A. Um, so yeah, they're just they're just really lovely, lovely quality, lovely colours, and, and really classy. This one is a favourite of mine, just because it's such an unusual colour. It's called uh, Misty Blue, 
Now, all of these are um, 112 centimeters wide, and they're sold by the half meter. Holiday, Tracy. I haven't been on holiday for four years. Um, now, I just go brown quick. So just walking down the garden from the house, if the sun's out, I'll walk back a different colour. So my, my daughter is quite envious because she goes back a different colour, but her colour is more of a red, as is my son. He had a very sore back after the hot weekend last weekend. Um, oh, thank you, Julie Jones. I'm very good. Thank you, Alana. Um, Jenny's crochet in a blanket. <laughs> that, that, that does make it sound, Jen, like you're currently sat crochet, crocheting a blanket full of cold and cough. That's not a nice thought for a blanket, is it? <laughs> um, don't know what I'm doing for my birthday. Um, Gary's taking me out somewhere, but he won't tell me. Don't like surprises. Don't know where we go. Um, Lorraine, three pounds fifty for half a meter, and they are so one hundred and twelve wide. So that's the amount that you get. If you wanted more than half a meter, they do they do come in one continuous piece. They're not pre-cut half meter pieces. So you could have anything up to ten meters of that because that what comes on a bolt in one cut. I mean, you can have more than ten meters if you want more than ten meters. Um, they would actually go really nicely with the pets collection, yes. Um, okay, then we do have some brights. So there's the lime. Do we sell an awful lot of plain fabrics? I think it's, we, we've got a really large plain fabric section now on the website, all different kind of uh, qualities and brands. This is the first time we've brought you, oh, thank you, Shirley. Um, this is the first time um, we've brought you Rose and Hubble fabrics, which is, which is quite exciting because they're lovely quality. This one is pomegranate. And then we have, Oh, I can't remember what the purple one's called. Oh, 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 bear with me while I just have a look on the website. I'd remembered all of those names apart from the purple one. See if I can find it. Couldn't get on last week, could I? Oh, have a look under New In. You're just sit and watch me do that. Um, so, hang on a minute. So we go, menu, can you see that? Menu. No, it's not doing it. Um, a purpley coloured one. Thank you, Christine. And this one is Jade. Aren't they fabulous? I always, I, I don't know, I know I've said before, I don't know about you, but um, I would very rarely buy a patterned fabric without buying a plane to go with it. Because if you're patchworking something, it kind of breaks up the pattern. Um, or I'll be lining something, or I'll be piping something, or binding something, and it's always, always nice to have a plane to go with a, with a, with a pattern. A uh, purple, that's the one, hello. A uh, purple. Uh, the bag behind me, Yvette, is a project from the Half Yard Club. So it's a members project from the Half Yard Sewing Club. What fabric did you make the weekend bag from with a mint bang from pocket? This one is the lattice canvas. So they're both canvases. Um, yeah, that, that one was lattice. Um, the roses one were out of stock of, but we're going to see if we can get some more. The blue should be back in stock now. And then I made a brightly coloured one as well. Oh, I made this one as well. Got quite carried away with these bags. So we have that one, and I can't remember what the fabric's called still. And that's just with the green poplin. Useful bags though, aren't they? So, oh, and that fleece. The firm fleece, I can't, honestly, I can't, I can't believe how much, how many of you have bought it. Um, every time I put it back in stock over the last few days, it's sold out within seconds. Because you, um, if you go to a sold out product on the website, um, you'll be asked if you want to be notified when it's coming back in stock again, so you'll get an email. So literally, as soon as I've put that fleece back in stock, all the emails go out and it sells out again. We should be getting more in on Tuesday or Wednesday. I've been told it is out for delivery on Monday, so depending on how quick the, uh, the couriers are, it'll be here Tuesday or Wednesday, and we've got loads. <laughs> so just just to let you know but if you wanted to if you want the fleece i would um i would click on the 
keep keep me informed i think it says or something like that when you actually go onto the product on the website um it'll just say keep i'm sure it says keep me informed just click on that and you get an email when it comes back into stock again um all the colors really offer some reason yeah we did ha to be honest we had a problem with the car key couldn't quite get the color of that right this morning but i'll have a i'll have another go at that they're, they're difficult colors to photograph to be honest but um have another look at those while we're here. If you want another look later on, then let me know. But yeah, I'm not. I'm not quite sure if those are an exact match. But we'll have a look. We'll have a look at that later. So who's just got back? Well, Deborah's just got back from the shops. Uh, I'm going to make one as a hospital bag. Oh, you'll be able to fit loads in there, um, Caroline. Absolutely. Can't wait for the fleas to come in. Yeah, ho hopefully we've got enough this time. <laughs> we've ordered so much, we can't really fit it in the house. Um, yes, like a stock update, Mayor. Yes. Right, one more to show you here. I haven't seen... Oh, there's the mouse. <laughs> and we're talking Christmas. And this is a, um, a lightweight canvas. Um this is the kind of thing it's really strong and robust but if you're making um uh, gift bags and things like that that's going to be absolutely perfect maybe that could be a table runner um what would you recommend what type of fabric to make a wet waterproof pouch to go with the duffel bag why don't you i haven't got it here why don't you use eau de coat so i, I, I did have some knocking around somewhere here. If you use an eau de coat, sorry, I'm just looking on my shelving. Um, you can use any fabric you like, and then you just you just coat it with uh, just like a gel, and it makes it waterproof. Um, so you could, if you're making the duffel bag, use one of the same fabrics as long as it's not the the leather. Of course, you wouldn't put uh, eau de coat on that, um, but make it up out of the same fabric, and then just then just coat it. Um, oh, thank, thank you, Kate. Love it too. Phase eight. I'm chatting with my best friend. Oh, hello. It's nice to have you here. Uh, fleece arriving this afternoon. Guess what I'm doing tomorrow? <laughs> um, okay, so we've got we've got this back in stock and or in stock. That's a new one. I'm, I'm not getting up again. Come here, Eric. And the fabric that I made the gnome out of. There you go, there's a gnome bum. Um, again, the light rope um, canvas with the uh, Christmas houses on. That one's now back in stock again as well. I haven't got a piece to show you, which is why you're looking at Eric's bottom. Um, no, Leon, I, <laughs> I do have Bob Cam. It's not charged up at the moment. What I don't have is Bob. So if, uh, yeah, may maybe for next time. I'll try and get, I'm trying to get it all set up for Wednesday. Um, Hello, Samantha, in um, Melbourne, Australia, on holiday. Right, so th th that's it. That's all the fabrics. Um, however, mm. I'm, I'm going to be on Crate and Craft, not tomorrow, but next Sunday. Thurs Thursday morning at nine o'clock, we're launching my book, which is the Half Yard Winter Collection which is the one with the gnomes in. Um, and I have put a lot of kits together for Create and Craft to make the gnome. I just want to stress that the instructions won't be with the gnome, you've got to have the book. But the, the, uh, the kit will be sold separately to the book. So if you've pre-ordered one from Amazon or me or Search Press or anywhere else, um, you can still use the kit for it, just FYI. I shall give you a reminder about that on Wednesday. Um, but I, just, I wasn't going to show you quite yet because it's a little bit early. But a week tomorrow, so on the 10th, um, I'm going to be launching some panels on Create and Craft. So you may have seen this one before. It's back. I've had it all reprinted. This is my hedgerow panel. Um, I've made a quilt and bags and all kinds of stuff out of this. But um, Oh, no, 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 that's not coming yet. That's August. Oh, sorry about that. That's way, way ahead. That'll be August the 14th then. So next week, this is the one that's back that I meant to show you, which is the 
Robins on Bobbins fabric, which is the one that the bag's made out of here. Let me show you a bit closer. Um, so I'm still trying to catch up with your messages while I'm talking. Um, so it's four designs of fabric all together on one big panel. So there's that one with kind of the shadows, then there's the, the white background and the stripes and that one. And that's going to come with four project sheets with full instructions on how to make four different styles of bags. So that's one of them. Again, that's as a week tomorrow on Create and Craft. Um, yeah, Sharon, I'll, I'll have to ask him to have a look at those um, those colours on the website. Been been quite difficult. We just really wanted to get them on this morning. It's been quite difficult to get the colours. Um, that's all right, Linda. So anyway, so that's coming up then. It will be available on the website a couple of weeks after, maybe a week after, because they've got an exclusive for a little while. And then these are brand new. Again, just on Crate and Craft, they're not going to be on the website just yet. They're cushion cover panels, and those will come with instructions to make four cushion covers and two tote bags with that one. So that's bird houses. All my own work. And again, okay, I'll show you these in more detail next week. But I just wanted to, because they were here, because they'd been photographed, I just thought I'd show you now. And this one would make really nice bags. It's beach houses. And again, you've got six different images in there of different types of, of beach houses. So that was a little bit fun. No, er Eric and friend Anne are on on Thursday the 7th at 9 o'clock in the morning. These panels will be Sunday the 10th at 11 o'clock in the morning. Um, what else is on that one? Beach has that one, that one. There's another panel, but I can't remember what it was because we're planning way ahead, so I've got quite a few to show you. Um, thank you, Dad, you like them? 18 fold away shopping bags from Debbie's Pattern for our wheelchair members. Oh, I'm glad that was useful for you. Right, shall we do, shall we do a bit of sewing? Um, so again, if you, just, if you just come along, little pouch to keep my phone and my dog treats in when I'm out. Make a nice um, kids crossbody bag as well, because it's, uh, it's dinky in size. Um, yes, Jacqueline, I th I'm pretty sure they're doing the instructions separately. Um, they will at some point be a download on the website as well. Right. So this time, oh, let me just put the iron on. May have to put some water in the iron. That I think so, Sarah. I've um, I've made um, a couple of. So it's the same as. Just switch that on with the um, the bird houses, the instructions are for just two really simple tote bags. So there's that on the front. There will be coordinating fabric kits as well that have all the zips and the magnetic fastening. And this one comes with a yellow pin spot um, poplin. Um, but just that on the front of a bag. And the cushion covers have actually got a border of the poplin around them as well. So it makes it makes them a little bit bigger than that. But I can't wait to see what you're going to make with them. But again, they will be exclusive for a week or so with Create and Craft. Um, and then hopefully we should be able to get some on the website. I'd have to get some more reprinted. Um, right, do we have to get the gnome kits from Create and Craft? At the moment, Julie, yes. Um, they've um, kind of put their names on every kit that I've got and they're asking for more already. Um, if there are any left, then I'll get them back and I'll put them on the on the website. I have a feeling they're going to sell out. And to be honest, there's so many bits in them. <laughs> Gary, Gary's dressed the set. Look what he's done with her. Sitting there with the cross legs and doing that. Um, you'll have, let me show you them. Come here. Oh, oh now look, my mouse has fainted. You will have in the kits um, green felt, white felt, the red check fabric, the, fa the felt for the hats, the, um, the yarn for the plaits, the ribbon, the nose felt, and the beard, and some elastic for the skirt. Yeah, that's it. You will need 
quite a bit of toy filler, so probably a 250 gram bag at least. And if you're going to put wire in the legs, then you, you'll need to provide that, or pipe cleaners or something like that, or chenille sticks as we call them, because um, I can't put wire in the post. Um, but you will need the book. The kits don't have any instructions. You will need the book to make those up. Let me just pop those back up there again out the way. With me mouse, you can go there. There we go. Okay, we can do some sewing, aren't we? So what we do, Eric be the one, Eric fabric, not exactly the same. Um, it doesn't have houses on, it's the same brand. Um, it doesn't have the houses on, it's got stars on it. Um, but everything else will be exactly the same as that. You, you wouldn't know looking at it that that wasn't exactly the same fabric. It's the same color, same tone, same, same canvas, same everything. Um, yeah, she fainted, Helene. A tutorial on a different type of duffel bag for YouTube. I can put some thought into it. I'm, I'm a bit busy for a while, but yes, I'll have a think about that one. You could put a bell on the end of the house, or pom-poms would look nice as well. Um, it was suggested last week as well that you could even make them in Santa colours. So, you know, white beard, red hats, and a Mrs. Santa there as well. So, I mean, you don't have to buy the kit. You've got all of the instructions in the book. I'm, I've just put that together because I know you're going to be saying, where did you get that fabric from? And you may as well get it from me. So that's, that's why I've done that. Um, cheap pillows from Asda News, that, that's a good idea. Um, right, okay, so let's sew. We've got everything. This one, I just put a patch pocket on the front and then I thought afterwards I could fasten that with a popper. So I'm going to pop a popper on this one. I'm going to pop a popper on this one. So we have, oh, and on this one, the fringe across the front, I did try a popper but I tried after I'd made the bag and that's far too thick to put the other half on. So we'll do it properly this time. Um, hi, Debbie Baxter. Um, so that's actually the selvage of the fabric and I just think it's really pretty. So with that one, I just cut the selvage off and sewed it into the seam at the top. So there's two pieces of fabric there and that was sewed into the seam. This one, I'm not going to do that because the selvage was pretty dull on that one, but I just thought I'd, um, I'd make use of the selvage. Um, yes, they would reset. They will be shipped separately. Um, yeah, because I, I don't know where you're pre-ordering the book from. You can pre-order it from me, you can pre-order it from Amazon, you can pre-order it from Search Press. Um, but it's a different website to Create and Craft, so th th their sales will go one way and my sales will go another way. So yes, they, they will be sh shipped separately. Um, and if you're pre-ordering the book, books can't go out for another two weeks um, because Create and Craft have got an exclusive on them. So you'll probably get your fabric before you get, uh, before you get the book. Um, I'm doing it now, Leanne. Oh, no, no, I'm not going to do a separate one. Um, Unless I've got time tomorrow. I've got a, a quite a few books to sign. This palette arrived yesterday with piled high with um, the Christmas books for me to sign for Create and Craft on Thursday. So I've, I'm going to have a pretty busy weekend doing that. But yes, I could try and do that. Because we've been talking an awful long time and not going around sewing anything yet, haven't we? Um, two of you books from Search Press got the discount you mentioned. Oh, thank you, Julie. Yes, if you are a Half Yard Club member, um, and you go to the book section on the website and click on the book that you want, it'll take you to the Search Press website and a discount code to get 30% discount. So you can order the book, pre-order the book. The Maddie book's on there as well. All my pre-order books are there too. Um, so you can pre-order that and get 30%, but you need to be a club member. If you're not a club member and you want a discount, th these won't be signed. Um, and you want a discount, if you use the discount code DD105, that's capital D, capital D, 105, on the Search Press website, you'll get 20% off any book, anything, not just mine. That's UK only. Um, oh, Alice has just had a pink parcel. Ordered from you, just haven't received the fabric. The, the winter book with... Oh, so, Rita, sorry, I thought you meant the book with the kit. Um, yes, so if, you, if you've pre-ordered the winter book and you've ordered fabric, you should get your fabric. You should have your fabric. Um, when did you place your order? Let me have a look when I've finished. 
um, when it was. If you placed your order yesterday or today, it'll be going out on Monday. But that will be separate because these won't be going out for two weeks. So if you pre-ordered with fabric, fabric goes out. We don't, I'm not hanging on to it. Jane's got a puppy. Oh, it's got a swollen toe. Oh, right, anyway, let's do this. Two pieces of fabric for the outside of the bag, and those each measure nine inches by six, in, or six inches by nine inches. Two pieces of lining and two pieces for the pocket. The outer fabric is six inches square. The lining fabric is six inches by six and a half inches because I'm going to create a border that goes over the top. And then I've got fabric for the strap, which is two and a half inches wide. And I haven't actually measured the length I want for this yet. So this is probably going to be the easiest way to do it is to literally sling it over. Oh, that's about right. That'll be 44 inches then because that was the width of the bolt. Um, so I know that's going to fit. And then I've got a zip too long as usual. Um, so let's make up the handle first of all. Oh, and fusible fleece. I'm using H640 for this one. I've lost my ironing board. How can you lose an ironing board? Oh, it's on the floor. Why is your ironing board on the floor? I don't know. Okay, so let's make up the handle first and I'll put the fleece on the back of the outer fabrics while I'm there. So like we've done a hundred times before, we're going to fold this to the centre and then in half again. So let's just move those out of the way. Fold in half to mark the centre. I'm not putting any kind of interfacing or anything on this one. And then we'll fold the two long sides to the centre again and sew down. I'll just sew down one side. So you've got quite a slim strap on this one. It'll be just over half an inch wide. Uh, Sarah's pre-ordered on Search Press and got the discount. Yes, 30% discount if you're a club member. Well done. Thank you, Leanna. Uh, Wednesday. And your order should have gone out yesterday. What day is it? Saturday, Friday, Thursday. Your should have gone out Thursday. There we go. Um, if it's over £25, it would have gone DPD. You should have had an email, and those went out yesterday. And um, all of the orders were taken to the post on Thursday, from Wednesday. Does that make sense? How quickly the post office processed them is a different matter, but we get them there on time. So that goes to the centre there. What channel is the new show? Will they take orders from EU countries? I'm pretty sure they do, Gay. Um, you, you'll probably be better off going straight to their website, um, which is, um, is it createandcraft.com? If you just search create and craft, I'm sure it'll come up. It might be createandcraft.com. So if you just want to order, you can order that way. If you want to watch, um, then can you watch on YouTube? I'm not sure if they're live on YouTube. I'm sure somebody out there will let me know. It's been a long time since I've um, worked on Create and Craft. I don't really understand the way they work anymore. So it's channel 85 on Freeview, and that's as much as I know there. I don't know what the other platforms are. So if anybody knows, could you stick a comment in the box for me? I don't know. Maddie's been moved. No, Jenny. I hadn't I haven't heard if Maddie's been moved to March. I was told it was January. Hmm. I should be inquiring about this. A search press party on Friday. Oh, that was another thing I wanted to mention. Um I will post again. Um next Saturday, the live will be at four o'clock in the afternoon, not eleven o'clock in the morning. Because it's the search press party, can't miss that. Um, and I'll be staying overnight in Tunbridge Wells, so um, I won't be back by 11 o'clock. Probably will be. So I just thought we'd play it safe and we'll do it in the afternoon instead. It is on YouTube. Well, there you go. Apparently you can watch on YouTube. But you need to order from the website, from creationcraft.com. Or is it .tv? Thank you, Anne. And for, oh, oh, somebody's put, oh, thank you. Thank you for putting on the other different platforms, because I wasn't sure. 
the live oh, they're live on the website as well oh there you go live on the so you <laughs> i don't actually work for great and craft i haven't been there for years apart from a, an occasional book launch so sorry if i sound a little bit vague it's all changed very much since uh, since i was there last um Oh, really, Jenny? Mm. Well, they haven't let me know about that. I'm a bit moody about that. I should double check. So I'm just going to put some fusible fleece on the wrong side of the outer pieces, not on the pocket pieces. I don't think it needs it. And again, this is H640, which gives, it makes it, it's easy to sew because, you know, I don't want anything too stiff because I'm putting a zip in there. Um, so I'm not going to use a foam or anything like that. If you wanted to use... Um, an interfacing like G700, that would work as well. Use something though, because otherwise you can have a bag as floppy as that, which didn't, it just doesn't work. Um, let's iron that on. This does work better with steam, but I haven't got any water in my iron at the moment. Oh, there you go, Rachel. You probably hear me staggering on Friday night. There we go. I know I'm going to have to get my head around um, all of these um, create and craft channels and terminologies and offers and things like that. They've asked me to um, to cover a couple of days holiday presenting at the end of August. I don't, I don't I'm a bit nervous about that. I don't know anything about paper craft. Be interesting. I hope they don't take into account sales because I don't think there'll be very many. Oh, hi, Lisa. Wasn't expecting you today. All right, just cut around those. It says, oh, Linda says it says search press 31st of January 2023 for Maddie. I'll have a look later. Words may be had. Uh, the part we're to make, not sure if it's wide enough. Alana, it's, um, I think it's 150 wide, this one. Maybe not. I can't remember. Doesn't it say on the website? I shall double check later, if not, and put the measurements on there if they're not there. Oh, I know, but I, I've put I've put this, the first on the website because I got my dates mixed up this morning. So, oh, sorry, on on YouTube and on Facebook, I think I put the first, and it's the second. So, sorry about that. Near the pigeons. Okay, so I just need to change the colour of the thread. I did say, oh, actually, do I? No, let's go with dark red. That's fine. So I'm going to sew down the side of the, uh, the strap just to hold that in place, like so. Oh, it sounds like my needle needs changing, bashing a little bit. Some of the patchwork fabric. I need to go and look. It's it's lovely fabric and it's um it's a poplin. So this would make I think a very nice. That's a bit boring to watch, isn't it? Um, I think that would make a very nice blouse or a dress or even uh, these uh, dresses with the puff sleeves that are so fashionable at the moment. It would look really nice in that, I think. Julie can find you. Oh, they're chatting amongst themselves. Hi Jane. I know Sarah, it's been a long time since I've done that. So there's my strap. And I'm just going to make up the pocket while I'm here as well. So again, the pocket pieces are different sizes. The lining is half an inch longer. I'm using a quarter of an inch seam allowance and I'm just going to sew straight across the top. Granddaughter needs a, rain a rainbow unicorn tote. She's in from Montana. Oh, how lovely. Okay. Now then, because the oh, move that out of the way, it looks a bit messy, doesn't it? Hello, Anne Marie. Oh, Ruby. Hope you get better soon, sweetie. Go and give Grandma a cuddle, huh? Grandmas are good at making people better. That's that's what we're best at. So when I press this. I'm going to fold the lining over the edge of the seam. 
So I've got a little border across the top. And then I'm just going to sew across there. Oh, it's all right, Jen. I had me worried then. I went, went all hot for a minute. So just top stitching just underneath the seam. I, I don't know about you, I find it quite difficult to stitch in the ditch accurately. And I find it a lot easier to sew just underneath than exactly on the, that seam. And the thing is, if your stitch line isn't absolutely perfect and you're stitching along the ditch, it really stands out, I think, if you don't get it quite right. So um, stitching just underneath either side, I think, is a lot easier. Well, Karen's feeling poorly today as well. Oh, um, aren't you nice? Aren't you not nice? This is going to go on the front of the bag. Oh, poppers. I was going to put poppers on, wasn't I? So what colour should we go for? Um, Got to be pink, hasn't it? So if you haven't used these before, it's ever so easy. I keep mine in a box because they keep falling out. So I'm going to fold this in half and just crease the centre and push one half of the popper. They've got a spiky bit on the end and push that right the way through the fabric. If your fabric's a bit too thick, then you can use something like a quick unpick to just make a tiny hole or a bridle if you have one. And then one half, I'm going to use the outy bit. You've got an outy and you've got those two look. So you've got basically one that sticks out and one that has a like a cup in it and one fits inside the other. So I'm going to put the, the one that sticks out on this side. So that goes on there. And then sit that into the tool and squish it. You don't need to squish it very hard and that's on. And then on this side, I don't know if it's going to go through actually. We'll, uh, we'll soon find out, won't we? I'm just going to take a marking tool and mark the opposite side of where that's going to go here. And then take another popper. This has got to come through from the other side now. So in fact, I am going to make a hole in that with my unpicker so I know exactly where that's going to go. Push that in there. Oh no, that'll go in easy. Out it comes. And then the second half goes onto the spike. Karen, I just saw your message, thinking of you. I hope you're going to be better soon. That sits in the cup. So just push the fabric all underneath there, it will go. Oh, just, it's just, just popped off the spike. Hold the line. And that goes in there, and then you give that one a squish. So now those two will sit together like that. We have got, uh, by the way, um, the poppers and the gun set at the gun, the tool separately, as well as together. I think so. If you wanted to restock on your poppers, then um, then you can get hold of those separately. Right. So now I'm just going to sew down the sides and across the bottom just to hold that in place while I put the rest of the bag together. So I can lengthen the stitch a little bit. And I'm sewing really close to the edge, so this is within the seam allowance. So it's not going to show when I sew the rest of the bag. So really close to the edge. It's just shifted a little bit now. That's yeah, fine. Okay, so now we're going to put the zip in. No, we're not. We're going to put the handle on. So this is going to go 
face down here. I don't like the male and female thing, Bonnie. I get, I get images in my mind. And that goes there. And then make sure the strap isn't twisted and we're going to come in the other side here. Oh, come here. That's it. And that's going to be about an, an inch and a quarter away from each side there. Just as long as they're even, that's, that's fine. I'll have a pin in there. Hey, Meg, Megan. And Anne's wedding anniversary tomorrow, 51 years. Wow, Anne, congratulations. What are you doing? Oh, what did you do last year for your 50th? Was it big party time? We're halfway there. We're 25 years next month. We're we going to Cornwall. We're going to have a few days away with the dog. Um, right, where did I put my zip? Here we go. The mouse is so bit up enough to crawl out the bag. <laughs> she, <laughs> she was she was in between the two um, uh, gnomes, Lisa, and I went over and picked the gnomes up, and she just fell. So I think she's I think she's had a bit of a tipple this morning. Um, right, so zip facing down on the top, and I'm just going to sew down the centre of the zip. I don't need to explain again why I use zips that are too long, do I? No, I didn't think so. Let's move the needle over to the left-hand side. And then that will do. And then sew straight down the centre of the zip. Then I'm going to take my lining piece. And... That goes together there. Dad's 80th birthday. Oh, happy birthday to your dad, Lisa. So the zip sandwiched in the middle of the two pieces, basically. And then I'm going to sew along that same stitch line here. Let's just sew down there. I think I'm missing quite a few messages, aren't I? Um, oh, mouse isn't working properly. Sorry, I missed that message from Dawn. So I'll, I'll, have, a, I'll have a look back through later on. I'm sorry about that. Not doing the special, didn't last year, but we're fine with each other. That's nice. I think it would make a great gift. And the, the nice thing is it's, it's quite quick to do as well. So um, do you make things to sell? Do you have a little craft store or anything like that? So I've got the, the outer and the lining on opposite sides of the zip. And then let's do the same with this side. So outer fabric face down. I always like to sew zip side so I can see exactly where I'm going and line up the edges of the fabric here. And then we'll do the same with the lining. Hi, Julianne. Just back from watching granddaughter play tennis. Oh. Gary went to Vienna's um, sports day yesterday. It is, I, I couldn't make it, but it was really nice to see the pictures. And then lining on the opposite side. I must do a YouTube on this. Maybe I'll do it when I finished here. Um, and make it a little bit more slowly, maybe. Okay, so I'm, again, I'm sandwiching the zip in between the two pieces. Answer. And I do, I know I've said before, but I do sew the lining and the outer fabric separately. Even when I'm sewing myself um, without anybody watching, because I, I know then that I'm, I'm stitching it in exactly the right place. Right. Then I'm just going to top stitch with a handle up along each side. And that's going to hold the fabric in place. And it kind of looks nice as well. So just making sure I pull the lining and the fabric away from the zip. And so.
and then the same on this one. So pull the two pieces away from the zip and so then we'll chop this end of the zip off where do these threads come from because I don't know, I think they just grow then I'm going to open the zip here but then just sew across the end of it to hold it to hold it together while I make up the rest of the bag then I can chop that off and it looks like that needs trimming a little bit as well right then with the zip open and that's really important we're going to take the two outer pieces and sew them right sides together and the two lining pieces and sew them right sides together making sure the handle is out of the way I can hear rain when you come up to the zip push it towards the lining side because the zip is going to disappear into the end of the fabric like that and we want it to disappear to the right side so to the lining side you could put another pocket on the other side actually you can have a pocket on the front and on the back and it's quite big enough to um, put an inside pocket on it as well be like a, a mini organizer bag I don't know Sheila I, I, when Gary came up um, setting up doing lighting and hiding mice he, as he went back into the house he said I'll bring you coffee in a bit obviously not very important anymore um. oh Karen's watching from a motorhome how lovely you need to leave a gap in the lining side I'm going to leave that in one side and I've just sewn around here non-family testing oh talking to each other again no Jenny um, I'll be there on my own I don't think TV is uh, is Kim's world So she come and help me set up. Oh, so I'm, I'm just sewing all the way around, so nothing too interesting to see. Yes, at the moment, Burn, the panels are just going to be on Create and Craft. They've got an exclusive for a week. Um, turning gap. If there are any left, I don't think there will be. We can, we can always have them reprinted, so they will eventually be on um, on the website as well there won't be any anywhere else at the moment just on crate and crafting website right so same all the way around left a gap in one side of the lining then let's snip across the corners and then we'll turn it the right side out and i've got rid of my rubbish there you go Nice having a name. Um, it was Mary at one point, Debbie, I think. I think we called her Mary. Yeah, I was saying earlier, Patricia, it's a nice size for a child. Um, and it, I mean, you can make it in any kind of fabric, so a novelty fabric might be, might be quite nice as well. <laughs> Lisa, they have a, a five second delay to accommodate um, potty mouths. But the only thing is you've got to have a director that's really on the ball listening to everything that you say, just in case. It's never, it's never happened. All, all the years I've been working in TV, which is about 130. Um, oh, no, I did once. Um, when I was on um, Children's ITV, I used to do the links in between the programmes many moons ago. And um, we had a, a researcher who used to work for Pop Around, if you remember Pop Around. Um, so had lots of contacts in the music industry and we were told that we could have any pop star we wanted on the shows um, as long as they talked about children's programs so we could promote records and things like that but but they had to promote children's programs um, we had hue and cry on or oh, telling a minute it's coffee time oh. 
coffee. Yeah, yeah, people are asking where my coffee oh, is. No, sorry about the delay. It was raining. Rain doesn't normally stop play. It fills the cup up more. <laughs> Cheers. Thank you. So anyway, put that over there. Um, yeah, Hugh and Cry were quite, uh, there were two brothers, if you remember, um, and they were quite rebellious. And I don't think really liked the idea of being on children's television talking about danger mouse. Um, so they were quite rude. And they, I mean, they didn't swear, but we were doing this thing. There was a program called Your Mother Wouldn't Like It. So we had this, oh, it was hilarious. There was two presenters, so me and, and Gary, not this Gary, another Gary, and then um, the hue and the cry, I can't even remember their names. And we had to go, your brother wouldn't like it, your mother wouldn't like it. And then one of these guys was supposed to say, your grandmother wouldn't like it. And he just went, your grandmother would positively puke. The look on my face, I was, I was livid. I was so cross with him. As I know it wasn't swearing, but that was, oh, I was so cross. So I, I, I've told pop stars off before now for spoiling my programme. Yeah. So if you're watching Mr. Hugh or Mr. Cry, because I still can't remember your names, out of order on a children's programme. Honestly. <laughs> yes, and hopefully we'll be together in that, uh, in 51 years as well. Um, <laughs> I, I hope they never did find Linda. Linda wouldn't appreciate that kind of language, I'm sure. So I've turned that the right side out, and uh, I now have an L in the side that I'm going to close. Remember, run around, not pop around. Definitely a pop around. Um, it was all it was all pop programs. Yeah, we had quite a few people. We had. Uh, I mean, this is going back to the eighties, so. If you're not of my kind of age, you probably won't remember these people. Um, oh, who was it wrote a song? It wasn't Millie Vanilli, but it's old. Oh, it, uh, not Eddie Spaghetti. Um, <laughs> one of one of those bands. In fact, I've still got it somewhere. Wrote a song and gave it to me on a on a cassette. Oh gosh, that's gone. Your mother wouldn't like it. I don't remember the programme, to be honest, and it, it, was, it was one of mine. Um, Gary prompted my husband to brew up. No, lovely. So just, uh, just, I'm just going back in time again, actually. I'm not even thinking about what I'm doing here. Let's push that inside there. Let me show you what I'm doing. So lining goes in. Push up the corners. I so said they won't come all the way out because the zip's disappearing in there. So it will be slightly rounded. And then we can zip it up. And I've just sewn a little bit of that into the seam. That was clever, wasn't it? <laughs> I'm blaming you for that because of the chat. OK, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. Because um, I've finished it all. And I'm now going to have to open the seam up. So I'm not going to turn this inside out, unpick the opening, and sew it back together again. I'm going to hand stitch it. Fancy doing that. So unpicking as little as I need to. So now I've got a gap. So I'm just going to use a ladder stitch and sew that closed. If I can find a needle. <coughs> Gosh, excuse me. Um, I'm a pincushion. Oh, there's my other pincushion. Well, so many pincushions knocking around and there's a needle so I'm just going to use a ladder stitch to sew this closed in cream because it's going to be a lot quicker to just put a few stitches in here than it is to unpick it all and start again it's raining cats and dogs in St Vincent and the Grenadier oh no Carol it's supposed to always be hot there isn't it You could sew taps on the zip so it's flat. You could, Lorraine. I just thought it was a bit little, this, this bag, to put tabs on it. Oh, you're going to sit and watch me try and thread this needle. There we go. 
Um, what's the little purple fabric basket you just used? That is um, a YouTube video, actually. If you have a look on my, well, you're there anyway. Um, if you have a look on my videos, it's uh, it, it's on there. I think I'm. Did I make three of these in one session? I can't remember. Different different styles of boxes. I don't know where the others are. But they're they're just really useful. I've got I've got quite a few bits and bobs like that, and really really easy to make. Okay. So little gap in there. So I'm just going to take my needle into one side. Needle's a bit thick actually for this. Took the knot out of the way. And then I'm just going to sew that closed with a ladder stitch. So into one side and out. And the opposite side and out. And just sew all the way along the gap. And I shan't do it now, but the lining needs to be done as well because I've sewed that all the way through. See, no matter how careful you are, sometimes it just happens, doesn't it? These threads can go inside there. So with a ladder stitch, the smaller the stitches, the more invisible they're going to be. <coughs> Excuse me, when you pull that tight, you shouldn't see the stitches at all. There we go. And then let's knock that off. And again, I do that on the inside as well, but not not for now. So it just needs a final press, I think, and then it's done. Used to watch you on Pete Practice, but not his programmes. Oh, what was my name on Pete Practice? It was Miss Oh Mrs. Bristow. Mrs. Bristow with a breast complaint on Pete Practice, I was. <laughs> I just want to poke that out a little bit more. That can be squarer. Okay, then we're done. So that's another one. So that was the one I made this morning. And put that there. Sheila bought me some of these. I have loads of, taking the iron out, I've got loads of quick and picks now. I shall never be without one. It's one of those, you know, when you put things somewhere safe and then you can never find them again. Right, so those are the two. Again, that one used the um, uh, the selvage just as a trim. And this one, I made the pocket a little bit longer so that I could wrap the, the lining over the top. And that one's got the popper on it. So I've got quite a secure pocket on the front. So somewhere to keep all my dog treats. Actually, that's a bit bigger altogether, isn't it? Oh, there you go. Um, I did cut this one deliberately because I wanted it to be the same size as the boxes. So that's probably why that turned out to be a little bit bigger. Um, okay, a deliberate alteration. Absolutely. I just wanted to show you how I would do that if that ac if that accidentally happened, which of course it wasn't accidental. I meant to do that. Uh, scritipility. That's the one. Scritipility. <laughs> um, oh, thank you, Angela. Um, oh, I'm glad you like it, Cherry. Thank you. I uh, twisted a strap in a bag recently. Noticed too late. Thought, what would Debbie do? but left it as it would have been and slightly strange. It depends how long the strap is. If that one was twisted, I'd be quite tempted to chop it in half, untwist it, and then make a trendy knot and make a feature of it at the end, is what I'd do with that one. Um, or chop it in half again and maybe join it with a piece of bias binding. So untwist it and rejoin it again with some binding, make a feature of it. How to make a pouch to put the cable lead in for an iPhone. That's a good idea, Karen. I'll have a think about that. Maybe we could do that in a sew along. Should we do a sew along? The next one is on the 30th of, um, of July. Um, okay, I'll be sitting next to the thing I put down. Yep, that, a scissors with me, Janet. I, I mean, I don't move anywhere from here. And I put my scissors down and then they just seem to disappear. Right, I shall see you again on Wednesday at four o'clock in the afternoon. Wednesday we're going to be doing techniques. Um, I've been asked to do a buttonhole again, so we're going to do a buttonhole. I'll see if I can get the four-step buttonhole set up as well. I do have a little machine that has a four-step buttonhole, but I don't know if I don't know if I've got all the bits for it. Um, I need to find a button placement foot as well because I've been asked to demonstrate that, and we're going to do a pin tuck foot, which will include a twin needle um, as well. So that's going to be Wednesday at four o'clock. Um, thank you. Birthday's on Monday. Thank you very much, everybody. Oh, that's really nice of you. Thank you. Um, and then next Saturday, remember, I'm not going to be here until four o'clock in the afternoon. 
not because I will be nursing a hangover, just that I'm staying over at um, in Tunbridge Wells and it's um, it's rather a long way. It's about three, three, three and a half hour drive from me, maybe four. Um, so I don't think I'm going to be back in time to get ready for 11 o'clock. So it'll be four o'clock in the afternoon. Did I say that? I'm repeating myself. I'm trying to multitask and I tend to do that. Get in there. Um, thank you, Karen. Thank you, Elaine. That was really nice of you. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. Thank you, Leslie. <laughs> okay, then. Well, enjoy the rest of your weekend. I'm going to go and start signing books. I don't think I've got enough Sharpies, but I'll, uh, I'll, I, shall, I shall scribble on. And um, I'll see you again on Wednesday at four o'clock in the afternoon. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thanks for joining me. Bye-bye.